Mark Tim, and I'm the shop teacher. In today's episode, we're going to create this branding iron. We'll design it in Fusion 360, we'll cut it out using the CNC mill, and then we'll turn the handle on the wood lathe. Follow along. I'm new to Fusion 360, so I pulled in a DXF file that I had created previously. Once I pulled it in, I went in and I changed the units to inches, and then I selected the circle and the logo, and I used the push-pull command to bring them out to 0.375. I then drew a center square on the back that's 1.5 by 1.5 which was my stock size and then use the push pull command again making sure I use join and I extruded that out to 0.27 I changed the cam and then I selected a 1 16th flat end mill to do the process with. I used a 2D pocket, selected the desired places, set my multi-pass depth, Now if you notice at the top and on the sides, it did not go all the way around. So then I went in and I used a contour, selected the outside circle, did two passes on that at multi-heights. I then used a post process so that I would write G code that my mill would understand. I measured out on a piece of brass stock that I had, marked the length of the material. I then used the horizontal bandsaw to cut the brass to length. Once I had my blank, I marked from corner to corner to establish the center point. Using that center point, I placed it in the vise on the CNC machine and moved the bit to the center point. I then ran the cam file and the machine cut out the logo. If you don't have a CNC machine, you could always put the logo on the brass and use a Dremel tool or something similar to carve out the logo. This is just faster and easier. Once the brass end of the brand was made, it was time to start working on the handle. Here I'm cutting some strips to place along the outside of a walnut core to make the handle.
once I have my strips cut, I'll use some glue to glue them to the walnut core. What you don't see here is once this side was dried, I went ahead and wrapped strips on the other two faces so that the oak went all the way around the walnut. I like to use hand screw clamps because it gives me a nice even clamping pressure over a long distance. Once the handle's dried, I mark the centers and then punch the centers using a spring punch. I mount the handle between centers on the lathe and turn it around. Right now I'm just trying to knock off the corners. And here I am putting a tenon on one end. I'll put my scroll chuck on the lathe and mount the blank in it so I can drill it. If you don't have a scroll truck, you could always use the drill press to drill the center hole in the handle. Now I'll work on fitting the ferrule at the end of the handle. I use a compression fitting from the plumbing supply. I'll measure it with my calipers, check it, and then you'll see me stop many times sneaking up on that diameter. This is one of the places you want to make sure the fit is nice and tight so that you have a good glue bond in that spot. Here I'm adding a couple of grooves in that spot where the ferrule will go so that the epoxy will have a good place to adhere to. Now I'll take the chuck off and I will remount the blank between centers. This allows me to work the entire length of the blank right up to the end of the handle without the chuck being in the way. I begin shaping the handle, working the nose of the handle down to the ferrule. I want to make sure that's a nice, smooth transition between the two, so I leave the ferrule in place while doing it. Now I start shaping the other end of the handle. I'll use a spindle gouge to uh, shape it, and then I'll actually go ahead and grab a small parting tool to give myself a little bit of space at that end. I'll grab my roughing gouge again and finish shaping the handle so that it fits my hand. Here's the finished look. The walnut sticks out of the oak as you turn it. Once the handle has been sanded up to 800 grit, I will buff it with Triple E and then white diamond and then I'd finish it up with a carnauba wax. 
I use the Beal buffing system, but you don't have to do this step at all. I just do it because it makes it shine. I use the drill press to drill a hole in the back of the brass piece. This hole is so that I can tap it so I can attach a bolt to the brass and attach a handle to that bolt. Here I am using a tap to cut the threads. I use a bottoming tap because it's a very shallow hole and I want as many threads as I can possibly get on it. I mix up a little bit of epoxy. Once I have the epoxy mixed, I use it to attach the ferrule to the handle and then the handle to the bolt that I have uh, screwed into the back of the brass piece. Once the handle is dry, I heat the brand up with a torch and then test it out. Thanks for watching. Please click subscribe for more videos.